What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and in today's video we're going to be talking about how RabbitMQ works and some other things but I gotta first talk about how it works before we get into the other things, right? Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to be talking about exchanges. That's the type, that's the title of the video anyways. Exchanges. I guess it's going to be a Tyler video. I'm not too sure, but we're going to be talking about a lot about exchanges of rabbit MQ exchanges. You're going to be using exchanges a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in rabbit MQ. Basically that's the whole thing they're going to be using, right? So it's very, very important to understand the uh, types of exchanges rabbit MQ rabbit MQ comes with, right? And you probably don't even know what exchange is. We're going to get into that. Don't worry about it. All right. So let's actually go over like how rabbit MQ works. Okay. And everything starts off with an application that wants to send a message. And this is called the producer producer. And sometimes it's called publisher, right? I like using publisher more than producer. So if I say publisher, or producer, you know, I'm, they're basically the same thing. They're, they're the same, not basic. They're the same things. Just want you to know. Okay. Now the publisher connects to, uh, the message broker in our case, it's going to be rabbit MQ. And then it publishes this message to an exchange. All right. Bam, bada, bam. There it is. The title, uh, exchange. Okay. Now along alongside of the message from the producer, it could also send in a routing key and we'll get into like what, what we're talking about when we say routing, what routing key. Okay. We'll talk about that in a bit. Don't worry about it, but just know that a routing key can be sent with the producer's message or publisher's message. Okay. Now the exchange then passes on this message to the queues. I'm not going to write it out, but you know what I'm talking about when I say queues. Um, it could pass this message along to the queues. Now, the way it does this is that the exchange will use certain rules to determine which queue to route the message to. These rules are called bindings, okay? Just making sure you're understanding, all right? They're called bindings, all right? So the exchange, again, I'm going to say it one more time. The exchange uses rules that's going to determine which queue to send it to, okay? And like I said, this is the whole thing that we're going to be talking about because this is this is everything. This is everything, okay? This is basically everything. 99% of the thing is going to revolve around the exchange. Oh, and by the way, the rules could also use the routing key that the producer gave out as well. It's just, just letting you know. All right. After that, the message is sent to the consumer, right? Or the application that wants to receive that message. And this is called a consumer. Consumer. Right there, right? There it is. Now, I want you to keep in mind that consumers can fetch or pull messages from a certain queue as well. Uh, the broker doesn't necessarily have to push the message to the consumer. The consumer could ask for a message from a certain queue as well. Just, just letting you know. The very last step is that the consumer is going to send a message back to the uh, broker message saying that, or to RabbitMQ saying that, hey, uh, we got the message, we've done what we needed to do with the message, everything is A-OK. -okay. And this is basically telling the RabbitMQ, hey, okay, just delete that message from the queue. We've done our part already, all right? So yes, this is basically how it works, guys, okay? Uh, how RabbitMQ work. We have the publisher that's going to send a message, maybe with the routing key as well. It depends. And then the exchange with certain rules is going to send it to a certain queue. All right. Depending on the rules. And then the queue is going to send it to the consumer. And then the consumer is going to send a message back saying that everything's okay. Delete the message. Okay. Now that's basically how it works. It's pretty easy, right? It's pretty easy how it works. The, the most difficult, the most difficult part about this whole thing is going to be revolving around this area right here, including the bindings. Okay. Uh, this is going to be where it's going to be kind of iffy. All right. This is going to be, yeah, this is, this is what I want to explain in this video. Now these exchanges, right? These rules, 
there, there's four different types of exchanges. There is fan out, there is direct, and there is topic and headers ex exchanges. All right. So fan out, fan out exchanges, direct exchanges, uh, what was it? topic exchanges, and headers exchanges. We're going to be talking about all those in this video. By the way, guys, I do want to say that these cues are directly bounded or these cues right here. You can't see it right here. Let me actually move my mouse because. OK. Yeah. OK. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Bear with me, please. Please, please, please. So these cues right here are bounded to a certain type of exchange. Remember the 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 four different types of exchange. So these cues are bounded to a certain type of exchange. Just let you know that, okay? All right, all right, enough about that. Let's get into like the different types of exchanges and explain a little bit more about each one of them. The first up, first up is the fan out exchange. All right, this is the most commonly used one. This is one that probably everybody knows about. Now, a fan out, fan out exchange routes, routes messages to all the queues that are bound to it and the routing key is ignored. It does not matter what the routing key, the publisher could have sent a routing key, but fan out just ignores it, all right? This exchange, the fan out exchange ignores the route out, routing key. Just screw it, all right? So let me paint, paint you a little picture right here. We have a publisher, right? It sends a message screwing the routing key, who cares if it sent one or not, and it's going to send a message to the exchange. This one is called the fan out, obviously, right? And the fan out, like I said, it routes all the messages to all of the queues that are bound to that fan out. Remember, like I said over here, these queues are bound to a certain type of exchange. So let's say that these two queues right here are bound to this fan out exchange. Well, the only queues that this fan out is going to be sending is to those queues. Now, every queue is going to receive that message, the same exact message. Every every uh, queue that is bound to that found out is going to receive that message. Like I said, this is the most simplest uh, exchange that we're going to talk about in this video. Well, there's actually two simplest, but let's talk about some use cases for a fan out, okay? Now we got the MMO games. Can it could be used for leaderboard updates or other global events? Sport sport news sites can use fan out exchanges for distributing scores updates to mobile clients in near real time. Distributed systems can broadcast various state and config, configura, configuration updates. Group chats can distribute messages between participants using a fan out exchange. It's just it's just a broadcasting kind of thing like socket.io, right? You got that broadcasting feature. Fan out is exactly like that. It's just anything that's bound to it is going to send that same message to everybody. Okay? All right. Next up is the direct exchange. Now, the direct exchange delivers messages to queues based on a message routing key. It has to equal the routing key. Let me paint, paint you a picture, right? We have a publisher, right? And it's going to send a message and it's going to send a routing key of purchase. Purchase, okay? And then, like I said, it's going to send it to the exchange, but this exchange is the direct exchange. And now this direct exchange, like I said, the rule is that it's going to send the message to the queues that equal the routing key. Okay, so let's say that we have queues over here, like two queues over here. One's uh, for purchases, let's say purchases, purchase, and the other one is for registration, right? Where do you think it's going to send it to? Obviously, like I said, the routing, the queue has to equal the routing key, so it's only going to be sending it to this queue right there. So this queue is bound to a direct exchange that equals registration. And this queue is bound to a direct exchange that has purchase. Okay. So obviously if the routing key is going to be purchased, where do you think the direct exchange is going to send that to the message to, right? It's going to send it to the queue that has the purchase as the routing key or purchase for um, the binding for purchase. Correct. 
it's pretty simple, right? It just has to equal the routing key. Now let's take some, uh, let's take a look at some use cases for direct exchanges. And here it is messages to individual players in an MMO game, delivering notifications to a specific geographic locations, you know, distributing tasks between multiple instances, uh, delivering notifications to individual software services in the network. This one's pretty basic as well. This is pretty self explanatory. Well, not self explanatory, but it's pretty basic, right? Okay, now we're gonna get to the very last two. Now, these are somewhat more complicated, okay? They're, they're complicated. Next up is the topic exchange. Now, topic exchanges are used to route messages based on patterns in the routing key. And we'll talk about the patterns, okay? So let's say we have a publisher right here. We're gonna be sending some message and the routing key, the routing key that is sent is going to be I don't know, purchase, it's a string by the way, purchase, purchase, dot canceled. Just like so, right? And it's going to send it to the exchange. And this is going to be the topic exchange. Now we have some different queues over here, right? We have some different queues right here. This first queue is bounded by anything that has customer or wait, yeah, custom. How do you, I was gonna say how do you spell it, but customer and then dot hash. And I will explain what the hash means. These are actual things in RabbitMQ. Okay, over here we have something that's bound to star dot purchase dot canceled. Okay, and over here we have something that's called premium premium dot customer dot hash okay and over here just for just for uh sanity sake i'm gonna say customer as well customer dot purchase dot cancel this is the uh routing key i'm gonna say routing key so that way you already know what it is but i'm just you know routing key, that what key there you go routing key all right so this routing key is sent to the topic, which is customer.purchase.canceled. Now, what does this hash mean and what does this asterisk mean? This hash means that it could, after the hash, it could have zero or more words after customer, okay? So customer dot whatever, as long as it's customer dot and then whatever, it matches the criteria. You could you could think of it as a regex expression, right? Saying that, hey, if, Anything that has customer dot whatever, it doesn't matter whatever comes after that, is going to match it. It's a, it's it's good to go, right? This asterisk right here is a regex. I guess you could say regex. I'm not it's not a regex, but it's a I'm just saying this for simple terms. It's a regex expression for it has to be exactly, exactly one word. So there there could only be one word right here and then dot purchase dot canceled. Okay, so right before purchase or cancel, there can only be one word. Okay, now again, this hash, I'm just testing you guys. It could be premium.customer.whatever. It could have as many words as it wants, or it doesn't have to have a word. Okay, so where do you think this is going to go in one of the queues, right? So this is sent to the topic and the topic has that rule. Now it's like, okay, where, where exactly are we going, right? So this is bound to customer dot whatever. This is customer dot purchase dot cancel. So that does match. So it's going to go right here. This is exactly one word dot purchase dot cancel. Does that match over here? Yes, it does. Customer one word dot purchase dot cancel. So it does come over here. And obviously it's not going to come over here because this is premium dot customer dot whatever, which is not nothing related to this. Now, let me actually paint you another picture. Well, not another picture, but I'm just say uh, just just to clarify this hash right here, this hash and this asterisk. So other things that would match this particular uh, rule would be customer. Like I said, it could be zero or more words. So customer, it could be cus dot uh, Australia dot purchase or something dot turd or something like that, right? It could be cus 
dot dog dot cat it could be whatever right so you already know that's pretty simple right this asterisk i'm pretty sure a lot of people are like what are a little bit more confused so this asterisk basically means that uh things that would match this would be cat dot purchase dot canceled whatever dog dot purchase dot canceled something that would not uh match this right here that would not match this would be purchase Purchase dot canceled, whatever. The reason why this wouldn't match is because, like I said, this has to be one. It has to be one word. It has to be okay. There could only be one word before purchase, and since there is no word before purchase, it's automatically disqualified. Okay, so we're good right there. I hope that made sense. But anyways, this is topic exchanges, the rules for that. Anyways, let's, talk, let's take a look at some certain uh, use cases for topic um, for topic exchanges. Now, you can read through this. You could pause the video, but I do want to talk about another use case or draw you another picture of a use case that this is going to be useful for. So let's say that we have a publisher and we have a, uh, a routing key that has a cell dot completed right and this was completed in the us dash west dash one you might know this this is like a region in aws right and this is going to be sent to the topic uh exchange right and you could you could imagine that we have two services over here one one uh service that's going to um that's bound to sell dot whatever dot uh us dash west one right and we have another service over here that has that this is bounded to sell dot whatever dot eu west dash one obviously since this is in the us region as you saw right here this is the uh, routing key has us re uh, us west region is going to be sent over here okay i'm just letting you know that's another little use case that you could um i guess talk about with topic use cases right so anyways um yeah pause the video and read this but let's go on to our very last one which is going to be da da da, -da headers exchanges now header exchanges is basically like direct exchanges only that it ignores the uh routing key and it, it it looks at the headers that were sent with the message yes you can send headers with the message but um but like 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 the direct key it only looks at that and nothing else so let's let's take let's paint a little picture here we have the uh publisher right here and let's say inside the header right we have something called entity right and it's going to be order and then we have another header called action and it's going to be canceled right these are the headers that were sent in as well and this is going to be sent to the headers exchange so i'm gonna say headers right there and let's say that we have three different queues right here right okay and these queues are bounded to rules that say that entity is going to equal order. Action is going to equal canceled. And x dash dash match is going to equal all. Now, this is basically saying that every header right here has to match exactly the same thing that was passed in over here so everything that we have over here has to exactly match everything over here that's why it says all oh, everything has to match to the uh uh the headers over here that were passed in okay so obviously this does match everything so this is going to send it over here now this other queue has entity equals order action is going to equal confirmed and then let's say that x dash match is going to say all obviously this this does not match all of the headers from over here because this is canceled and over here you can't even see what i'm doing this is canceled and over here this is confirmed so it's not going to send it to this queue at all and the very last queue let's say that entity equals order and then action 
is going to equal confirmed, right? Same thing, but x dot match uh, is going to equal any. So this basically means that any one of these could match the uh, what was passed in over here, and since entity order does match the entity order over here, this is going to get passed as well. Right, like I said, headers exchange is basically the same thing as direct exchange. It's just a little, new, uh, just tiny bit differences, right? So let's take a look at some use cases for headers. Let's go over here. You could pause the video and read this on your own, but the main difference I wanna uh, uh, tell you guys is that headers aren't bound by the routing key having to be a string. All of the other exchanges, the fan out, the direct, the topics, the key, the routing key has to be a string. Headers, on the other hand, does not have to be a key. I mean, does not have to be a string. Oh, you can see it right here. It does not have to be a string, right? It could be an integer or a hash, a dictionary, for example, right? So it's very, very specific. Like if you really want to be specific on like uh, a certain queue or certain things that you want to pass, right? Um, yeah. Anyways, so to wrap up this video, pause the video, by the way, and look, uh, read this read this if you want to, but to wrap all of this up. So all in all to your message is going to be sent to all consumers, choose a fan out exchange. If you have a simple scenario that won't involve too many exchanges, exchanges, bindings and queues, then direct exchanges will work. But whenever you expect your system to scale in the future, this is very important. Whenever you expect your uh, system to scale in the future, or you need needs to some kind of or you need, sorry, I'm, I'm blabbering now. If you need some kind of filtering or categorization, uh, go for the topic exchange and they, it provides basically most of the flexibility. And if that's still not enough for you, header exchanges are a very special case. I would only recommend them if you really need to do some special filtering mechanisms that it provides. I don't know, man. Anyways, guys, that was it for this video. Like I said, the only thing I wanted to do was explain exchange type. Let me go. Let me go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, I wanted to explain the exchange type and I wanted to explain how the model works. Hopefully you understand this part because this part was the biggest part out of everything. OK, or actually by my bad, this whole thing right here, the cues, including including the cues. Right. So I hope I hope you understand this part of it. Um, because this is what we're going to be working on in the next few videos that we do for rabbit MQ. This is going to be basically the bulk of everything. All right. So if you didn't understand it, please watch the video again. If you still didn't understand it, maybe I did the video wrong. So let me know down in the comments what you thought about the video. So that way I could probably better explain it. Um, do another video better explaining it. Uh, so yeah, let me, let me know down in the comments. Thank you. Uh, like the video, subscribe, and I want to thank you guys for subscribing or watching my videos. It really doesn't mean a lot to me that you spend your time to watch my videos. I really do appreciate it, guys. So thank you, guys, and thank you, guys, for I got two Patreons. What do you think about that, huh? Mm. I got two Patreon supporters. Thank you, guys, honestly, for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. I really, really do. So thank you, guys, and I will see you in the next video where... We're going to do some basic stuff with RabbitMQ. So see you then. Bye.